Hello and welcome to part two of a 50th podcast special. If you haven't already, go back and watch part one. That was all about West Ham versus Arsenal at the weekend. Free all, very controversial. <laughs> Should have been 5 1, but mm, can't have everything. We've gone into that in more detail in the last one. We're not going to recap it now. What we're here to talk about, Mike, is the greatest one club men ever. Um, and this stemmed from something I was saying in, the, in part one with Mark Noble being one of my favourite players, having played for the same club now for 17 years. Yep. Being one of my favourite players. But is he the greatest one club man ever? Um, there are hundreds of these across the, the globe. So I've pulled from a list of players that I know played for one club. Um, and, uh, yeah, so obviously there are going to be people that I've missed, people I didn't watch growing up um, or were before my time that I've not included in this list because I didn't see them. Yes, okay, they're in the history books, but I can only compare to what I know. Yep. Um so how how I've specified this is loans do not count. So if you've been out on loan uh, and made senior appearances, that does not count. It's only if you haven't transferred from one club to another having made senior appearances. So, for example, John Terry started at West Ham, didn't make a single senior appearance, transferred to Chelsea, spent almost all of his career there and ruined it moving to Aston Villa for a season. You know, honourable mention, but isn't a one club man. Yep. Um, there are a few of these that, that go along, but we'll, we'll, we'll carry on. So, um, it, are there any that, well, I know there's going to be one, but any that automatically spring to mind for you as being up there with some of the best one club men ever? Yes. Uh, it's a player that I grew up <laughs> from a fairly young age but certainly from starting to when i started first watching the arsenal so we're looking 95 96 um it's mr arsenal himself tony adams yep was that uh, 672 appearances for the, the arsenal yes uh spanning over 18 seasons um, I think he won 14 trophies as well for the club uh, after retiring in 2002. So uh, he was um, actually left us on a title winning season, I believe. And then, uh, or certainly the FA Cup in in, in his last season. <laughs> um, I'd have to double check that. But and then, certainly and he, he went to do uh, a bit of this. Yeah. And for any of those who don't know what we're doing because <laughs> you're listening to the audio, um, that funny dance he did when he was managing, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so for, <laughs> for me, it's definitely one of uh, one of the, the the greats, certainly well within the uh, the top 10 for me. Yeah. So so here's the thing. I mean, I've got a list of, and I'll, I'll just, I'll zip through this quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven players I've gone in eight players I've gone into detail with. Um, so I will quite happily take Tony Adams on, on that top 10 list. There are two that I want to mention very quickly. Jamie Carragher, uh, 737 appearances for Liverpool. Uh, and Gary Neville, 400 appearances for Manchester United. Neither of them played a senior level after a permanent transfer to another club. I wouldn't put them in my top 10. I would probably... Although he didn't make as many appearances, I would probably put Gary Neville above Jamie Carragher just for the, the stuff that he won. Yeah. He, 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 See, that, there's, there's, there's two ways you can look at that. You can either, for, for me personally, you can either look at it uh, on the basis of what they've won yep. or the, the sheer number of appearances. So I can understand from both perspectives. Yeah. Because uh, I, I like Jamie Carragher made like 700 odd. 700 appearances. Yeah, 700. And this is, this is why it's a difficult thing to decipher, isn't it? Because. Mm. Both of them would, would go to war and still would for their clubs. Um, one made more appearances than the other. One more than, than the other. So it's hard. There, there are. I'm going to get a few out of the way very quickly just so we can rule them out. Um, I mentioned about John Terry ruining it at the end. There are some that I feel ruined it at the end. Stephen Gerrard being another one of those. Played his whole career all the way through for 
um, Liverpool. Um, and you could argue he's, he's one of the best midfielders ever to grace the Premier League. Um, all right, we didn't always like him, especially in FA Cup finals. Um, <laughs> but he ruined oh, it. It's all subjects. It's all subjects. It's still so. But um, he ruined it by moving to LA Galaxy. I think yeah, and to be honest, until, until you mentioned it, I completely forgot he'd, um, he'd made that move. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things that you're known for being a one-club man, and you have been, and, and there is no doubt he's Liverpool through and through, but you're not a one-club man anymore. Um, some that I forgot about until I was doing a bit of researching, and others that I found out about, but yeah. So, Iniesta, known for playing for Barcelona for years, 749 appearances, 73 goals, 157 assists, a World Cup, two European Championships, four Champions Leagues, nine La Ligas, six Spanish Cups, seven Spanish Super Cups, which is a bit like the Charity Shield, three Club World Cups, one UEFA Super Cup, uh, and then he joined a Japanese team for a season. Wasn't that the same company, uh, company the same club that Gary Lineker used to play for? I wouldn't, I couldn't tell you. No, can you can you name the club? Uh, Vassil Kobe. No, it's not. But but say all of those things, seven hundred appearances, all those honours, and then you're in it. Mm. Uh, the fact that Barcelona gave him an open-ended contract, he could still be a Barcelona player now if he'd wanted to, um, but he didn't. He moved to Japan. And the worst one for me, and I haven't listed all of his stuff because. It just frustrated the hell out of me when I did go, oh, yeah, he did do that. Daniel De Rossi, associated with Roma. Um, I want to say he's their highest capped player ever. Um, played for him for like 22 years, something like that. Um, and then at, right at the very end of his career, right, January transfer move to Boca Juniors, where he made two appearances. Why? Why would you do it? I, I just don't I don't understand it. I really, really don't. Um, and it frustrates me. Um, but say, there are two on my list that are still playing. Uh, one of them is Mark Noble. We'll come on to him in a moment. The other is more likely to move. So we can count him now, but come next season, because he almost moved this, he almost moved in the summer. Um, come next season, we may not be able to say that he's a one-club man. Uh, some would regard him as the best player to ever play. Um, some would re- regard him to to be... The second best player. The second best player <laughs> to ever play. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Lionel Messi. So let's run through some quick stats. Thus far for Barcelona, 768 appearances, 663 goals... 291 assists. Right? And this is that's, that's incredible. That's that's for Barcelona. That's not taken into account obviously World Cup goals, uh, European goals, things like that. European goals. Um Is this including friendlies as well? No. Well these are these all competitive these matches. These are all competitive matches. Um six Ballon d'Ors. And I, I I know I said European championships, but what I meant is like you know um South America have like their European Championship. Yeah, I, can't, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Um, that's what I meant. But six Ballon d'Or. Like Concaf or something. That's that's it. Uh, four Champions Leagues, ten La Ligas, six Spanish Cups, eight Spanish Super Cups, three Club World Championships, three UEFA Super Cups, and one Olympic medal. Um, so I understand why some people. He's got. Top goal scorer list, goal scorers in a thing. I didn't list any of those personal honours. These are just team honours. Um, mm-hmm. I know why some would say he's the best player ever because of just that there. Six Ballon d'Ors is, is unheard of. Same with the amount of goals and, a, and assists. He's got more combined than he has appearances. But he's only ever done it in one league. Yep. Um, would I have liked to have seen him five years ago in the Premier League in his prime? Yes. 29 years old, Lionel Messi would run riot. He would have also had to go to, a, to Stoke on a cold Tuesday night <laughs> um, and, and play in the FA Cup. But you know, do you know what I mean? Like, if he comes to, to Manchester City now, which is what the, the rumour is, 
he's he's not at his best, is he? He's still got unbelievable talent, but the sheer, the sheer physicality of the Premier League now, will he be able to hack it? Who knows? Mm. If if I was him personally, I'd say, just retire. Don't move. Be a one-club man. You stayed, you honoured the club that were doing you dirty, uh, that are sort of falling through the floor at the minute, but just retire mm. and go out as as one of the greatest ever. Don't. Very much in the same way as I was saying to you for Arsene Wenger, bow out on an FA Cup victory. You finished fourth for 20 years in a row, bow out on an FA Cup win. But he didn't. He stayed an extra season and he was like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Should have gone out on a high. Yeah. Should have gone out on a high. Um, where do you rate him? Do you rate him as the best ever? For me, this is very much a chicken and the egg sort of situation. I mean, there's there's no no denying his abilities as uh, a footballer and i think that and this this certainly goes back to the the, old, the age old debate between him and ronaldo in terms of who is the greatest ever yep. um you do have the arguments that ronaldo has done it in the premier league has done it in la liga has done it in italy um are there um does that, does that make him the better player Person, personally I think he. I I've never wanted to answer this question because I genuinely, genuinely find it so difficult to to, to justify one over the other. Mm-hmm. Um, for for me personally, I think Ronaldo is the better individual. However, I think Messi is more for the team, if that makes sense. Yep. So. It's it's only very 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 fine margins between the two players, but for me personally, if I was to pick one of their players in their prime for a team, I would pick Messi. Mm-hmm. If we had a fairly established team, and I think could take us to that next level, just based on number of goals, I would go for Ronaldo. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. The, the way I look at it is, is Messi is is naturally talented. Um, and I think was born that way and can could do everything without trying. They, it, it's very seamless. Doesn't have to, I'm not saying he doesn't, but doesn't have to put in the effort. Ronaldo, yeah. talented, but has, has worked to get where to where he is. He's all uh, when you hear about but like, former players that have played with him. He's the first one there. He's the last one to go home. He's the one that's doing the extra. He, he's the fittest person. He's the one who's encouraging other people. And, and for that, it's the work ethic for me is, is, is what picks Ronaldo as the best ever. I think we're, we're very um, blessed to have both of them playing at the same time, same generation growing up. I mean, in five years' time, none of these kids who are growing up now watch football will know what Messi and Ronaldo did in their prime. So they go, oh, yeah, I'm, I know the name, but... Didn't get to witness mm. it, um. So yeah, bit of a Messi Ronaldo discussion there. Didn't think we was going to get that in one man clubs, did you? Especially with <laughs> Ronaldo, um. Right, but we moved on from Lionel Messi. We know Mark Noble is a one man club, a one man club, a one club, one man. club man. Some might have said at points he was a one man <laughs> club, um. But. The reason I say is he the best ever. When when you you look at the 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 honours that these people have have managed to get over time, um, he hasn't got any. He hasn't got any. We haven't won anything. And and for me, that says a lot more than it does. If you're in a prime Barcelona like Messi, you had your Iniesta's, your Xavi's, your Ronaldinho's, your Ibrahimovic's, your Neymar's. You're winning everything. Why why would you want to move? You're playing for the biggest mm. club ever. Why would you want to move? And this this is why it brings up to me, uh, and and this is what you say you were just saying about Gary Neville, Jamie Carragher. Um, he's he's not won anything. He's been at the club for seventeen years. He is now the captain. Wasn't always. Um, Five hundred twenty-two appearances, sixty goals, sixty-one assists. Um, he is the most capped player for the team, and he's the second highest goal scorer ever. Only a couple of goals um, under Paolo Di Canio. 
the, the fact that Antonio, I think, will overtake him by the end of the season um, will make him the third. But I would like him to get a couple of goals before he, Antonio overtakes a record so he can be, right, at one point I had the most goals for the club and the most appearances. Just for me, personal honours, that would be that. But say, the, the, the point for me is that he hasn't moved he could have moved. There's no, there's no doubt about it. There were would have been teams that would have had him along the way. Maybe not the biggest teams, but say so having not won anything and still wanting to play because this is the team I grew up supporting. That that's the bit that 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 chucks his name in the hat for me. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit like Tony Adams, Mister Arsenal, grew up supporting Arsenal. Would have had the opportunity to move. Did he want to? No, he didn't because. I support Arsenal. I want to play for Arsenal. Why would I, why would I want to move? And very much, uh, Paul Scholes said the same thing. Although Paul Scholes won a lot of stuff, um, when you, you go back to the interviews and look at it now, especially after he's retired, he said, you could have offered me anything and I would not have moved. Because Manchester United was my club. That's who I grew up supporting. I, I support Manchester United. I play for Manchester United. I don't need to move. I play for the biggest mm. club in the world. Um, but And that segues quite nicely into Paul Scholes for being on the list. Um, 710 appearances from midfield, 152 goals, 73 assists, 11 Premier Leagues, two Champions Leagues, four FA Cups, three League Cups, one Club World Championship and five Charity Shields. Which, now I know a lot more about football and appreciate a lot more, winds me up that in all the old FIFAs, so going back, if I was Manchester United in a career mode, the first thing I did, right, sold Paul Scholes. Do you know why I sold him? Because he got you a lot of money. No, because he's ginger. <laughs> that is a hundred percent a true anecdote. Every time, because I didn't, I pre, I like watching football. But I didn't know much about it um, at the time. And it was like, oh, Manchester United, they're good. Like some of my friends support Manchester United and they always used to beat me at FIFA because they were Manchester United and I was West Ham. And my, the quality in teams was phenomenal. But so do a career mode, load it up, like Paul goals on the transfer list because you're ginger. I don't like you. If I had played it now, no way I'm selling him. No way I'm mm-hmm. selling him. Like one of the best midfielders ever to grace the Premier League again had it all. Some would argue he's, he's uh, the best midfielder ever to grace the Premier League. Um, and and all the England squad. Up for debate. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Um, do we want to do we want to go abroad or do we want to do our last player in the Premier League that I've got on my list? Uh, I think I know who the last player is going to be. So let's go abroad and we'll come back to that person. OK. And do we want <clears> to go to... I will give you an option. Being as you're not have been allowed to go on holiday this year, uh, do you want to go to Spain, Germany, or Italy? Ah, uh, well, I've been to Spain and I've been to Italy. So, and I've never been to Germany. So, let's go Ooh. Germany. I've been to Germany once, but only to land and refuel because it was really windy and we wouldn't have got over the mountains otherwise. And people moaned about that. So I didn't actually get to see Germany, but <laughs> no, it's a lie. <laughs> Have I been to Germany? No, I've been. No, I haven't been to Germany. I've been to Belgium. Um, right, Philip Lahm, Bayern Munich, left back, centre back, and more recently under Pep Guardiola, transfer or oh, transformed him into a bit of a defensive midfielder. Uh, for me, one of the best defenders ever. Um, Six hundred and fifty-two appearances for Bayern Munich. Twenty-two goals, seventy-two assists, which I think is quite phenomenal for. A defender. Uh, mm-hmm. He's team honours. One World Cup. Uh, one uh, uh, German League Cup. One UEFA Super Cup. Three uh, Charity Shield type things. So the, not like the equivalent in Germany. Uh, eight German Championships of Bundesliga titles. One Champions League. Six German Cups. And one Club World Cup. For me, player I, I always enjoyed watching for Germany and well, unless they were playing England and uh, Bayern Munich, uh, just 
one of sort of one of those people who best in class. You could include him in a lot of top 11s across Europe for for the last 20 years. Um, but yeah, that's my one German player who's got in. Generally, if they if they don't start at Bayern Munich, they end there at some point. So they're not one club men. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially in in my experience in in football in the last 20 years. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's who I would put up for Germany. Shall we transfer over to Italy quickly? Yes, do it. So we have, we're going to start with the, the I want to say lesser of these players, but it's not really. It's just the lesser appearances. I'll put it that way. Francisco Totti. Known for chipping keepers, 785 appearances for Roma, 307 Jesus. goals, 184 assists. So not the most prolific when you look at the amount of goals, but when you look at the Italian league and, and how things have changed since he's been playing, actually Roma were at the top and then they, towards the end of his career, were a mid to lower half of the table club. Um, went for a bit of a, a hard spell. Uh, but he did win one World Cup, one Italian Cup, uh, one Italian Championship, and two equivalents of the Charity Shield. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those... When you say Roma, you do think of De Rossi and Totti. They're the first people you think of. He had the opportunity to move. He was offered contracts by Barcelona and Real Madrid. Turned them both down because it, Roma was his hometown club. So, for me, uh, he, he's certainly up there with the best of the best um, and moving on to the, the other Italian Maldini so I know I said players that were before my time Maldini seemed to play over about eight generations He's, he was around <laughs> forever 901 appearances Jesus for AC Milan 33 goals 43 assists and people will go well that's not very many goals and assists he was a centre back essentially <laughs> Um, so, yeah, uh, three Champions Leagues, uh, two Cup Winners' Cups, seven Italian Championships, and one Italian Cup. So, yeah, there was other stuff in there that isn't around anymore that he won, uh, so I hadn't listed them. But just the sheer amount of appearances, Maldini, and mm. the fact that he was, his quality didn't go. I don't know how old he was when he retired. I don't want to comment because I'll get it wrong, but I want to say he was in his 40s. Um, but just quality throughout his career. Never seemed to put a foot wrong uh, and, and just absolutely brilliant. Uh, and, and say, if if we could reincarnate him and he would come through the West Ham Academy, then I would be happy as Larry. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I would be a happy, happy man because these days I reckon you're looking upwards of 150 million for a player like that. Mm. Uh, and the fact that he, the loyalty that he had would maybe frustrate some owners these days. No, I don't want to move. Well, you can get 300 million pounds for me. Yeah, I, was, I don't care. It doesn't affect me, does it? I'm happy where I am. Um, so, do we come back up? Well, I suppose we shouldn't come back home because Brexit means Brexit. We should go over to Spain, <laughs> shouldn't we? Um, so, in Spain, can you think of any one club men in Spain? We mentioned Iniesta for Barcelona. We've also mentioned Lionel Messi. So, that rules a couple of them out. Can you think of any more? I think, wasn't there a guy for, uh, I want to say Atletico Madrid? Quite can't remember his bloody name though. No, it wouldn't quite possibly be. I'm still thinking in terms of Barcelona. Um, one of my favorite, oh, one of my favorite um, players ever. With with the scraggy hair. With the scraggy hair. With, yeah, old um, poo hole. Well, yep, <laughs> old poo hole or poyo. Oh, as, Carlos as... Pu poo hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, Carlos poyo, um, known for his fair play. He, he dragged players away from referees and from tackles and told players to get up off the floor when they dived. Um, liked a big tackle himself. Um, and yeah, for me, again, one of the best defenders. I think out of these players, we could make a hell of a fantasy team. You, do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but for Barcelona, 595 appearances, 19 goals, 13 assists. Um, 
And now I've got to read my really scraggly, tiny writing. Uh, I've written down six La Liga titles, three Champions Leagues, one World Cup, one European Championship, three UEFA Super Cups, eight Spanish Super Cups, which is their equivalent of the, the Charity Shield, two Spanish Cups and two Club World Cups. So although compared to some of the players on this list with like the Maldini with his 901 appearances, 595 doesn't seem a lot, but it is. Um, and just the sheer amount of, of honours that he won, but he won everything. There, there isn't a single competition that he could have played in that he didn't win. Mm. Um, and, and for me, again, one of the, the best professionals ever to, to grace a football pitch. I, I, and I just, yeah. I, I was sad when he retired. And the fact that I don't watch Spanish football uh, a lot, I think goes to show not just the, 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 the impact he had on the international stage as well as in, say, like the Champions Leagues and things like that. Um, but mm. yeah, just a consummate professional. And again, if you could have him in your team, you'd bite his arm off to do so. And that brings us me on brings us on brings me on to my final player on the list and it is the player with the most appearances he did play in the premier league but can you guess who he is uh i can um i know this because he's got 900 and i think it's like 950 odd appearances possibly that was 930 appearances okay um played for the red half of one particular city yeah um scored some absolutely belters against us one namely in an fa cup i believe it is went on an absolutely blistering run banged it past us ran up the other end of the pitch took his shirt off spinning it around Oh, it's Mr. Welsh man himself, Mr. Ryan Giggs. I was really hoping you was going to go uh, lanky bastard, Peter Crouch. Because <laughs> no, I think no. he'd done a lot of those things that you said. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he's, he's had more fucking clubs than I've had on dinners. Yes, yes. has. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, he, maybe, if, maybe we should do another list for the hundredth, the, the best or, or journeyman careers of, of yeah, these yeah, players. Yeah. Who's had the most? Um, yeah, Ryan Giggs. The best Welsh player never to be English. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, was eligible to play for England. Believe it or not, started off at Manchester City. They said he couldn't cut the cloth. Let him go to Manchester United. What a mistake that was. Although, he did play under the best manager in the world ever. Which I think maybe had something to do with it. Mm. Um, 162 goals. 249 assists, 13 Premier Leagues, two Champions Leagues, four League Cups, four FA Cups, one Club World Cup, one Super Cup, and nine Charity Shields. He, he, and some would say he actually got better as he got older. He's, mm. And this is, this is a hard one to, to say, because it's a, in his younger days, he was he was making those gut busting runs and, and and beating players. As he matured, he he slowed down the game, controlled the game from left wing of all places. I, I think he made a few appearances in the middle, uh, fleetingly. But again, was seen as a consummate professional. I think the only thing that lets him down is he slept with his brother's missus. <laughs> Not only his brother's missus. <laughs> Not only go on, what not only his brother's missus, but what? Was that wasn't there someone else that he'd apparently come out and slept with as uh, well? And I don't know. Didn't, didn't he come and hasn't he been sacked or suspended recently for being a little bit too fisticuffs or, or something uh, as well? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm honest. I think he's currently managing the uh, the Wales squad, isn't he? Yeah, I think I I could have sworn he got suspended or something would, for or pending an investigation. Wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise no, me. No. Um, so, given the stories that you now started to hear about Ferguson and addressing him and how that was run and 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 uh, sort of policed, it wouldn't surprise you if if he if he holds those same ideals, making obviously nine hundred and thirty appearances and seeing all the ways that that things are disciplined, 
a kick of a hairdryer or a, or a football boot um, into one David Beckham's head. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just it's one of those things. Um, but that does bring me to the, the end of my list. And I know there will be people that we've missed, the people that I've missed. But I still want to know who, in your opinion, is the best one club man. Because for me, although he didn't win anything, and although he's not making many appearances, it's got to be Mr. West Ham. He's got to be, he would be in my top three. Just for the fact of, not saying he's the best player, not saying he's won the most, not saying he's made the most appearances, but just for the fact that he stayed at a club and won nothing for the sheer love of the club is where he puts him in, in definitely my top three. See, there, there is one player, again, who's getting on a bit now. And obviously there is the, the opportunity person who I'm thinking of to potentially go to other places. I think he's 28 years old now. Um, a previous Golden Boot winner. Um, but as far as I'm aware, hasn't actually won anything with a particular club yet. Um, does have the opportunity as well to go on Potentially, I'm not saying definitely, to uh, become England's all-time goal scorer. Mr. Harry Kane, will we be talking about him in four or five years' time as A, being someone who will stick at the club? Um, and B, will he be one of these players, one of the greatest players to play for Tottenham Hotspurs, become all-time record goal scorer? Um, longer or most amount of caps for Tottenham Hotspurs but yet not win anything I'm not saying the Spurs are not going to win anything do you know what I mean because that could... we don't know what's going to happen in the future yeah but... um I, I it certainly at the moment goes on the honorable mentions list um it's one of those who if if we were counting loan moves I don't there's only this list would get dramatically shorter uh make some loan mm-hmm. moves in his career played for all sorts of clubs when you look into it, it on loan um he I personally think he will move. Um, and, and the reason I say that is when you are, I, I think he will beat Rooney's record for England goals. I think he will become the Premier League's top goal scorer. And the fact that uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult one. He is, as much as I don't like him, as much as I think he's a dirty player, he is a good player and he can score a goal. Um, but I think he needs to win something. If this this season will be the make or break for Harry Kane, in my opinion, if they win the Carabao Cup at the end of the season, he will stay because actually I've got silverware. We can win things, and maybe that will be a kickstart change. If they lose that, I see him going in, going in the summer. Because thank you, I've given you my everything. And we still can't get it done. Mm. We've brought in the special one. We've got this fantastic new stadium. And we still can't win anything. I need to go and win something in my career. Um, and, and I don't... As much as Spurs fans would be upset, I don't think any of them would blame him. Mm. Um, his biggest trouble is, is he the best striker in the world? I don't no. think so. I don't think so. I think there are two very young players coming through that will pip him for the, the big clubs. The likes of uh, Haaland and Mbappe. Um, actually, uh, going to Manchester City last season, would he have won stuff? Yeah, I think so. I think they would have absolutely trounced the league. We've seen him su- supplying goals. Even if he'd l- moved to Liverpool, I think he would have fit in that Robert Firmino goal and, and can assist, can score. Um, and he would have won stuff. But at Tottenham, mm. I don't think he's going to be a one-club man for the whole of his career. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you, to be honest. I do completely agree with you. Um, as much as Spurs fans go on about how he's one of their own and all that sort of business, um, I know there's obviously the rumours about him being uh, at, at the Arsenal Academy for when he was a young lad. Um, was basically kicked out of Arsenal Academy, joined Spurs, um, and has been at Tottenham Hotspur so since I think it was about 11, 11 or 12, possibly. possibly It might have been 10 or 11. Um, 
obviously, as you mentioned, had the loan moves, but I think that was important for him for his development. And but I do think nowadays it is going to be about what what can you look back on? And I know that that, that seems really uh, contradictory considering what you just said about Mark Noble. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I don't mean it to come across as contradictory because I think, again, he is he is effectively the the West Ham Tony Adams. Do you know what I mean? I know yeah. Tony Adams did have some silverware to back it up, but there was that commitment, or there is that commitment to the club that you want to you live, breathe, and, and die by. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But for for me, I think unfortunately we're in an era now nowadays where you will see less um what's the word less loyalty thank you less loyalty to a club yeah um when you when you look at the the, the likes of the arsenal uh kids that are coming through at the moment so you mill smith rose your bakai hackers um your reese nelson's i know he's he's not playing as or hasn't broken through much as the other two have um but with the likes of Joe Willock as well, will will I, I, I genuinely I don't see more play uh, sorry players nowadays um, sticking to or becoming a, one of these one man one club man yeah or the, woman. the only the only one I, I and I think the likes of Tony Adams and Mark Noble that are a class of their own being and and, so, and say some of the likes of Totti have been offered moves um, that is their club Harry Kane. You've seen pictures of him as a youngster in Arsenal kits. Um, and as much as I, I, I would like to see Declan Rice do the same as Mark Noble and spend his entire career at West Ham, actually, if he were to move, would I blame him? No, because you deserve to go on and, and have your, your name on these trophies, have all these medals, because you have the quality to do it. Um, mm. But so, say he, he come from Chelsea's academy. So if, if it's a proper homegrown player, like Poyol, like Totti, like Adams, like Noble, they're not going to move because that's who they support. They grew up playing, and they. If, if you said to them, "Oh, by the way, we're going to give you a contract, but we're never going to pay, uh, pay you, but you can still play if you want," I guarantee you, every single one of those players would have gone, "Yeah, no problem," just for the sheer love of the club and wanting to walk onto the pitch. Mm-hmm. Same as Paul Paul Scholes. If he, if if Manchester United said, "You can play for us for as long as you want." But we're never going to pay you. He would have done it, and and I think that's what it comes down to, and and that's why some of these players, although their honours are not as good, that's why they would hit further up. I think maybe I I, I will sit down and have a proper think about it and release on Twitter my top ten, uh, and I didn't. Most of them would be in this list, um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, let us know who you think. Is the best one club man ever, or especially for your club, because most clubs have got one somewhere in their history. But who is the best player to only ever play for your club? So that's kind of a two part question, then, isn't it? Yeah. Who do you think is the best overall? And who, and who do you think is the best for your club? Yeah, it could be the same answer, it could be two different answers. Yes, yeah, could be. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really have anything else to add. I think we, we've hit the points of loyalty doesn't come easy these days especially with all the money flying about. Um, but say, will Messi, could Messi be the best ever? If he if he, if he he stays at Barcelona, has he got to go in the number one spot? I think he has, hasn't he? I yeah. don't think there's, with the, although he's not got the highest appearances, the amount of goals, the amount of things that he's won, the amount of assists. Some might say it's cheating because he, he come into a squad full of superstars. That's just falling on your feet, you know. You can't yeah, hold yeah. that. You can't hold that against him. He's he, he's shown that he's got the quality to sustain that, regardless of who's around him. But he could ruin it by moving to Manchester City in the summer. So, oh, almost took my ear holes out. Um, uh, yeah. Until then, that wraps us up. I think quite nicely for our, our second part of our fiftieth episode. Mm-hmm. If you haven't already, press like and subscribe. I've been Ian. I've been Mike. Uh, we are FDT TV, and we'll see you well for the next fifty, but especially after the next fifty, hopefully. Um, yeah, we will see you next week.
Thanks very much, guys. Bye.